Good morning and happy Sabbath, church family. Uh, welcome to our virtual worship service today. As you know, uh, we are closed uh, one more week because of the COVID cluster that uh, we experienced on Sabbath the 18th. I'm glad to report that uh, everyone that I'm aware of who has been sick is on the men, including myself. Um, this week, uh, I took another test and it came back negative, uh, thank God. Um, I have been feeling uh, good and back to health since Sunday. And uh, a few members of my family, of my household, uh, are still uh, fighting the, the tail end of this illness, but we are doing fine. Thank you so much for your prayers. Thank you so much for uh, your messages of encouragement and uh, looking in on us and seeing how we could help. It was really, really appreciated. And uh, as I said, we are at home one more week. Uh, we will be having the church professionally sanitized this coming week. The company that we have worked with in the past will be coming in on Tuesday. And so uh, we will, you know, if there are any remnants of, of this uh, virus in, in our sanctuary, it will certainly be uh, taken care of at that time. And so we anticipate uh, coming back to worship in person on January the 8th, so that's next Sabbath, January the 8th, which just happens to be my birthday, um, my 40th birthday, so so maybe there's, a, there's something uh, poetic about that. But either way, uh, God willing, and of course we will be paying attention to any changes that come from our state or our conference uh, regarding uh, numbers uh, that can gather together. But that's the aim. Uh, January the 8th, we will be back in person. This week, we made the choice uh, to do a virtual worship service, uh, not only to give our wonderful uh, musicians and AV team a break, but just to make sure uh, that we keep them safe as well. We want to do the best we can uh, to take care of all of our church family members, even those uh, who serve us week to week. I have a few announcements. I just want to remind you that this Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, the 5th of January, we kick off our 10 days of prayer. As announced last week, it will be on Zoom. We will not be having any in-person uh, uh, gatherings for 10 days of prayer, but it will be on Zoom. And uh, we will be uh, texting out that information. Uh, you should have received an email this week with the details uh, for uh, the 10 days of prayer on Zoom. So we look forward to seeing you there. Um, and also to let you know that the culmination of our 10 days of prayer on Sabbath, uh, the 15th of January, will be our community guest day. We anticipate being in person by then. As we mentioned, we're aiming to start back in person uh, next Sabbath. And um, so we, we anticipate being in person. Um, so prayerfully uh, see if there is someone in your life who you would like to inv invite to be a part of this experience, whether virtually through joining us uh, on our live stream or if it's uh, your choice and it's good and safe for your personal health, uh, to come in person. We look forward to that. Also on the 15th in the evening, we will be having uh, our uh, church business meeting. Again, that will be a virtual experience. We're going to be sharing with you some of the plans for the future, uh, giving you some of the reports from 2021 and giving you an opportunity to ask any questions and raise any concerns that you may have. Uh, so that's what's happening. Um, pray for the school as they get back in session this week as well. Uh, that, that they continue to maintain their COVID-free record. We appreciate everything that uh, Mr. T, Principal Turner, and, and the team are doing. Continue to pray, continue to give, continue to support. Uh, it makes such a massive difference when you do, when you do. So those are just a few brief announcements. For anything else, uh, we encourage you, as always, to check the email, um, to go to our website. We have a lot of uh, information there from week to week. And as you worship with us today uh, in this virtual experience, uh, we pray you would be blessed. Now, let me say one more thing. Today, and this is super special, I'm very excited about it. Uh, a few months back, we had our one day VBS. And there were many of you who did not get a chance uh, to attend in person. We were not able to live stream it. There were some of you who came from the morning but couldn't stay for the afternoon. Uh, today, this as a part of our worship service, we will be sharing with you the first half 
of the amazing skit that our uh, VBS uh, team put on. The second half uh, will be available on YouTube right after this worship service. And so you can, you can get the full thing uh, together. It's almost a, a feature length experience, but uh, we trust you will be blessed by the music, the prayer uh, that we have today and the message that comes to us through the vehicle of our VBS uh, Bible experience drama. God bless you.
here up there. Hello, everyone! Yeah. Okay, great. I just wanted you to get your wiggles out because for the rest of the show, we have to be quiet, right? So we can hear what everyone's saying, right? So what did you do upstairs? Raise your hand. Yeah, tell me what you did upstairs. You sang. What songs did you sing? How many songs? Ten. Is that true? Ten songs? Eight? Wow. That's pretty cool. So does anybody know the theme for today? Anyone? It's kings and queens. Can anybody think of a king from the Bible? Yeah. Go ahead. Um, Saul. Saul. Correct. Yes, you. Zoe. Jesus. He's the king. Anybody else? Yeah. Go ahead. You again. In the back. Nebuchadnezzar. Okay. Anybody know a queen? Oh, I heard Esther. That's right. Does anybody know David? Wow, I know David too. Okay, we're going to get started now, so you can put your hands down, okay? All right. Welcome, everyone, to a production of the BBS Drama Team. What we try to do is bring the words of the Bible to life. Throughout today, we will be presenting the stories of people in the Bible who became kings or queens. Of course, we encourage everyone to read these stories in the Bible. As a little note, all of our actors and actresses have taken a COVID test and we've all tested negative, including myself. Um, please remember to turn off your carrier pigeons or your birds that you have on you. All right, is everyone ready for the story? Yeah! Great. So our first story comes from the book of 1 Samuel, chapters 14 to 17. It's about David who went from being a shepherd to being king of Israel. Now before Israel had any king, they had prophets. Samuel was one of those prophets. And when Israelites asked for a king, Samuel anointed a man named Saul as the first king of Israel. As king, Saul had to deal with many enemies of Israel who wanted to fight them. One of these enemies were the Philistines. Another one of these enemies were the Amalekites, who had attacked the Israelites when they came out of Egypt. So it should be pretty clear that the Israelites and the Amalekites did not like each other. Samuel went before Saul and commanded him to go and destroy all the Amalekites according to the word of the Lord. He was told to leave no one alive, not even any of their animals. This was because when the Israelites were coming out of Egypt, the Amalekites ambushed them and attacked their women and children. So Saul summoned the, Israel, the armies of Israel commanded by Abner, his top general, and his son Jonathan. They attacked the Amalekites but they did not totally follow the word of the Lord. Saul left Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive, and also spared the best of the sheep and cattle for his own army. The Lord said to Samuel, I regret that I have made Saul king, because he has turned away from me and not carried out my instructions. And so it was that Samuel went out to meet Saul at Gilgal. My, my army has done as you requested. The men have rounded up the sheep and cattle to use as food. Well done, Abner. I sense the army getting tired and hungry. Also, we left the Amalekite King Agag imprisoned in one of the tents as you asked. He will be worth more alive to me than dead. Jonathan, why do you seem so worried? You and I have won a great battle for the people of Israel today. Father, I worry we have brought the Lord's anger upon us. Samuel told us to destroy every living thing, every animal. Don't worry, Jonathan. I will use some of the animals as a sacrifice. The Lord will be pleased with what we've done today. Mm -hmm. My 
high king, Samuel, the prophet of righteous. Leave me. I will speak to Samuel alone. Why is he here? May God bless you, Samuel. I did everything that the Lord instructed. The Amalekites are dead. What then is this bleaching of sheep in my ears? What is this lowing of cattle that I hear? They are to be offered as a sacrifice to the Lord. Oh, Saul, why did you not obey the Lord? Why were you so eager to take the plunder and do evil in his eyes? Do you not understand me? I said they were to be offered as a sacrifice. You know obedience is better than sacrifice. Is this the thanks I get for defeating Israel's greatest enemy? There was a time, Saul, when you were little in your own eyes. But now you have put your will above God's. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord. He has rejected you as king. No. No. Sam, that can't be true. No. no. Don't go. Don't go. Please, Samuel, forgive me. Today the Lord's anointed has been stripped from him. He has torn the kingdom of Israel from you and has given it to one of your subjects. One who is better than you. Samuel. Saul disobeyed God, and so God decided there needed to be a new king. Someone who would listen to God and not rely on his own strength and power to do what he wanted. After these things, the Lord spoke to Samuel and said, Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. You are to anoint for me the one I tell you to. So Samuel did what the Lord said and went up to Bethlehem. Samuel? What? Samuel the prophet? Do you come in peace, O prophet of God? Yes, in peace, of course. What brings you to Bethlehem? I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. In fact, I would like to invite you and all your sons to the sacrifice. Oh, yes, of course. We will join you. Now, Jesse, how many sons do you have? Well, I have many sons. Well, I have... Six? No, eight. Well, mm, well let's see. Well, one, two, seven, no, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. I have seven sons. Okay, kids. This is where you come in. I need six volunteers to be Jesse's sons or children. Okay. You in the dress. I don't know your name, so I'm sorry. Come, come, come. You can stand right here, Eliana. And you right there. What's your name? Come on, Esteban. Over here. You with the green shirt. With the dinosaur. Right? What's your name? Cameron, come stand right here. I need three more. Right here. Seven sons, sir. Jacob. Give or take. Give or take seven. Three, four, five. And you back there in the sweater. Come up. Moses. Moses, come on up. Come over here, Jacob. A worthy name. Oh, oh, oh. It's all right. You need Keep to watch out for the light. Together. It might be the next one. Here, stand over here. Let's spread out a little bit, son. Come over here. Come over here. All right, stop. Samuel blessed Jesse and his sons, and they joined him at the sacrifice. Your presence is uh, very welcome, Samuel. Thank you for having me here. I am eager to fulfill the Lord's command. 
So, so Lord has sent you here. Yes, I have come to meet your son. The Lord has a great need for one of us. Ah, yes, of course. Well, come here, come here. Who is this? This is my eldest son, Samuel. Wait, no, that's you. That's my this is my eldest son, Jesse. No, wait, that's me. This is my eldest son, Eliab. Sorry, my name is Eliab. Ah, yes, yes. Uh, Eliab? That's your son, man. Eliab. He sure does appear kingly. Very tall. Hmm. Surely the Lord's anointed stands here before me. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have not chosen him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearances, but the Lord looks at the heart. Very well, Lord. Jesse, how about the rest of your sons? Uh, yes. Father, you forgot about David. Uh, yes, David, he's in the fields tending to the sheep. But uh, surely nobody as young as him would have anything great planned for him. No one is too young for God's calling. Send for him. Eliab, go and get your brother. Okay, my friends, thank you for seeing Jesse. Children, watch out for the lights when you go back to your seat, okay? Yes, yes. You are all very fine specimens, you, especially Dino Borg here. Um, but <laughs> yes, you. none of you are the I chosen know. one. I just said to watch out for the lights. It seems that God has turned off the lights. <laughs> but it is all right. We do not have a famine. Not currently. So Jesse had, had David brought in. David was glowing with health and had a fine appearance. The Lord said to Samuel, rise and anoint him. This is the one. David, son of Jesse, in the name of God, I anoint you king of all of Israel. King? king? Is Saul no longer king? Saul is still king for now, but you are the Lord's anointed, David. What if Saul finds out? Won't he be upset? The Lord will protect you and give you strength. I don't know how exactly, but I know he will. So I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. Hey David, that's pretty good. You should write that down. Maybe put it to music. <laughs> so Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. Saul was still king, but David was now God's choice to become king eventually. Now, the Philistines, you remember them? They were another group of people who were enemies of Israel. Sometime after David was anointed, the Philistines gathered for war against the Israelites and camped on a hill above the valley of Elah. Saul and the Israelites assembled on another hill and drew their battle lines to meet the Philistines. The Philistines had a champion named Goliath, who was from Gath and was over nine feet tall. That is tall. He wore a bronze helmet and armor and carried a bronze spear on his shoulder. For 40 days and for 40 nights, he went into the valley and made fun of the Israelites. Israelites! Why do you come out and line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine? And are you not servants of Saul? Yeah, choose someone. Have them come down to me. If he is able to fight me and kill me, we will be your subjects. Yeah! But if I overcome him, you will become our subjects and serve us. Yeah! Yeah! Yes, run away! I defy the armies of Israel. 
You say your God gives you strength. Ha! You are weak, just like your God. Yeah! None of you are brave enough to face me. When Saul and the Israelites heard all of these words, they were terrified because no one wanted to face Goliath. Now, David's older brothers, including Eliab, had gone off to war, but David remained at home to take care of his father's sheep. One day, Jesse sent David with food and supplies to take to his brothers and to bring back news of how they were. David traveled all the way to the Valley of Elah and found his brother, Eliab. David, what are you doing here? This is a battle. You don't belong here. Well, I, Dad sent me to bring bread and cheese for you and the rest of the family. Oh, if I say you don't belong here, I take it back. I hope you brought some of that really good bread that Mom made. Yes, yes, it's all in there. So tell me, brother, what's been going on around here in the camp? Oh, the usual great things that warriors like me do, glory and honor, stuff like that. You wouldn't know about something like that. I mean, you spend all your time harping some lamb. So you've been in battle, then? I'm battle, per se, but I'm ready to take on anyone who challenges me. The day of your judgment grows old, Israelites. Do none of you have any courage? I challenge you. Send me someone to fight. Go and fight him. Well, looks like at least one of the Philistines is challenging you. Go on then, fight him. Oh, you don't understand, David. I can't fight Goliath. He's like nine feet tall. Tallest fighter I've ever seen. Taller than the king. Even King Saul won't go and fight Goliath. Speaking about my father, I only meant to show my brother how terrible that Philistine is. I heard that his armor weighs as much as a man, and the tip of his spear weighs 15 pounds. He's still a man, and a man can be defeated. I like your energy. Who are you? This is my little brother David. David, this is Jonathan, son of King Saul. Tell me, Jonathan, what will be done to the man who defeats Goliath? Why should this Philistine defy our God? You are young, David, but you speak with more courage than our bravest warriors. My father will give you and your family great wealth for defeating Goliath. David's just a shepherd. Don't go putting wild ideas into his head. I will do it. I will fight the Philistine. Why did you come down here? Who did you leave your sheep with? Well, I hate to bring food to the camp, but it seems like the strength is also missing. The shepherd speaks of strength. I know you, David. This is about your pride. All you want to do is see the battle. Can I not speak what I think? You most certainly can. Your attitude is most refreshing, David. Thank you, Jonathan. I'm glad you believe in me, at least. I believe in your courage. But Goliath is a giant of a man. How can you be so certain you can fight him and beat him in a fight? Goliath may be strong, but the Lord our God is stronger. God will give me the strength to put an end to the boast of the Philistine. I think we're going to be good friends, David. That is, as long as we survive. <laughs> but come with me now. Go before my father, the king. I'm sure he'll be glad to hear you. So David went before the king. While this was happening, Goliath continued to call out from the valley to the Israelites. This is your last chance, cowards of Israel. Send your best fighters. Send three or four. Accept my challenge. Yeah! Our men are terrified of the king's challenge. No one will go out and meet him. I can't just stay here. I have to do something. Something to prove I'm still worthy. Just like the Amalekites all over again. You're still worried about what Samuel said? He's just an old man. You are the king. You don't understand. Samuel may be old, but he carries the word of the Lord. Why hasn't he been back here to see me? That's it. This, this is a test. A test to prove that I am still fit to be king. I just need to, I just need to kill that giant. My lord, you cannot fight Goliath. Israel needs his king alive. Do not lose heart, my lord king. As your loyal servant, I will fight the Philistine. And what are you going to do, David? Harp him to death? Who are you? Father, this is David, son of Jesse. Well then, David, son of Jesse, 
Your courage is admirable, but you are far too young. It doesn't matter. I will kill the giant. That giant will cut you to pieces. We must meet Goliath's challenge. How can we let him think God has no strength? So, Jonathan, you make a new friend, and then bring him here to face the greatest warrior that Israel has ever fought. Between you and me, David, you should consider making different friends. Jonathan speaks the truth. We must fight for the name of our God. David, Goliath is a warrior, trained, strong. You are none of those things. You are no soldier. I may not be a soldier, but I am a shepherd who keeps my father's sheep. When a lion or bear came to take one of the sheep from the flock, I would chase it and rescue the sheep from its mouth. If it, it turned on me, I would strike it and kill it. That Philistine will just be like that lion or bear, because it has, he has defied the name of our God and the armies of Israel. The Lord will protect me. Well then, you should take my armor and my sword. I don't know how to use a sword or how to wear armor. I cannot use these things. And what will you use to kill the giant? Harsh language. Hasn't the giant spoken enough harsh language to us? I believe in David and in our God's ability to protect him. Israelites! A curse upon you and a curse upon your God. If you are so weak, how much weaker is your puny God? Yeah. I will defeat him. David, may the Lord be with you. Wow. David sure trusts God a lot to go and fight Goliath, right? How many of you would like to fight a giant? Yeah? You have that much courage? That's great. God, Goliath was always stronger than any of us. And as strong as David might have been, he was no match for Goliath. But sometimes our own human strength is not enough. Let's do an activity about strength. Can I have four volunteers, please? You got chosen last time. Can you put your hand down? Everyone has to have a chance at least one. Okay. You. Ellie, come up here. You. Come on up. You may also come. And you were supposed to come up last time. Come, come, come. Okay. All right, everyone. I have some sticks for you. Let's see. I can even open. If you can break them, you want to try? You think you can break them? Hold on, hold on. Let everyone get one stick. Let's see if they can break. Do you think they can break it? Yeah. All right, go. So easy. So easy, right? Can you put them in here? That was so easy. You can put it on the ground. Let's try four. Huh? You think you can do four? That's three. Hold on, let me get one more. Wait for me. Wait for me. This is four. Ready? One, two, three. Break it! What? All right, put it in the bucket. I'm going to give you 10 this time, okay? Okay. Let me give you 
sum that I'm not even going to count. It just looks like a lot. I need one person to try this. Ready? One, two, three. You want to, does anybody else want to help her? Okay, pass it to someone. Hey, it's pretty tough, right? Someone else, give it to Ellie, give it to Ellie, let's see. It's pretty hard, isn't it? Let's see. <laughs> it's really tough. Right? Yep. Okay, you can't break it. <laughs> All right. Thank you to my volunteers. You can just leave it. Thank you to my volunteers. Round of applause. Round of applause. Thank you. These lights. <laughs> As we learn, our own strength is not always enough, right? Did you see him not break it? Sometimes we need God's help in our lives. And when it comes to our story, David knew he would have to place his trust in the strength of God to defeat the giant Goliath. David took his staff in his hand, chose five smooth stones from the stream, put them in the pouch of his shepherd's bag, and approached Goliath with his sling in his hand. You send me a child? Cowards! Let it be known the Israelites send their children to fight. Go home. I don't kill children. Yeah, get out of here. Am I a dog that you come at me with a stick? <laughs> I am Goliath! The greatest of all Philistine champions! Yeah! Who are you? I am a servant of the living God. Today the Lord will deliver you into my hands. Very well. I've waited 40 days to shed the blood of an Israelite. It might as well be yours. Come to me, little one. I'll kill you and feed your flesh to the birds and the wild animals. You come at me with a sword and a spear, but I come at you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you defy. Today, I will feed your flesh to the birds and the wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. You have no sword, no spear, no armor? How can you expect to defeat me? It is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves. The battle is the Lord, and he will give all of you into our hands. Goliath moved closer to attack David. David reached into his bag and took out a stone and sling. With it, he struck the Philistine in the forehead. The stone sank into the Philistine's forehead, and he fell to the ground. And so it was that David triumphed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone. Without a sword in his hand, he struck down the Philistine and killed him. The Philistines saw that their hero was dead and ran away. The Israelites charged after them with a shout and made a great victory that day before the Lord. Through courage and strength of David, God saved the Israelites from the Philistines. And for us, the lesson is to be learned that God will give us strength like David. That's all for now. We'll see you later for Esther. Thanks for listening. Bye.
promise God of rolling thunder The only one forever I need to feel you near Remind me of your glory God of Abraham, beginning and the end. I need to hear your voice. Remind me of your promise. God of rolling thunder, the only one forever. To feel you need Remind me of your glory to hear your glory, God of rolling thunder, the only one forever, I need to feel your name, remind me of your glory. The fire inside is dying I don't know what I'm doing No, no, no I'm running low on faith I need to see your face The fire inside is dying I don't know what I'm doing I don't know what I'm doing, no, no, no.
On this New Year's Sabbath, the first of 2022, there are so many things to give God thanks for and to bring to him in prayer. And so at this time, why don't we bow our heads together as we ask God's blessing on this new year. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you so much for a brand new year, an open slate, uh, so much possibility. And yet, Lord, we know that there will be challenges that we will face ahead. Well, we start this new year on this first Sabbath of the year, simply asking for you to be with us and thanking you for all the ways that you have been with us in the last year. You have brought us safely through another year. We have faced the challenges of illness, of financial need, of family struggles, of our own personal health, we have experienced the challenges of seeking to maintain a strong spiritual connection with you. Uh, at many moments, Lord, during the last year, we have failed you, and yet your grace and mercy has continued to cover us. What a wonderful saver you are to us. We thank you so much. Father, I lift the church up into your hands, the entire church family, and we ask that you would be with us in 2022, that this would be a year of special blessing, of special growth, personally, spiritually, and even numerically for our church family. Uh, that as we take up the challenge of sharing the special message you have given to us, to young people and their families in Chicago, that you would go with us, that you would empower us, uh, and that we would see the results of your spirit at work in our hearts and also in the world. Father, we continue to lift up our leaders. We think of the new leaders who will be taking up their posts for church leadership. Bless them and anoint them with your spirit, we pray. We pray for our leaders at our conference. Continue to guide Elder Ron Aguilera and Elder John Grice and, and, and Treasurer our team to just uh, lead us in the way uh, that we uh, should go. Father, we pray for the local uh, lead leadership, our governor and our mayor and the different uh, members of staff that have to make decisions that impact how we live here in Illinois. Give them your spirit, guide them, and allow them to enable us to experience a greater freedom to worship and serve you in accordance with the dictates of our conscience. We also lift up our national leadership team, President Biden and his team, Lord. We ask again for your guidance and your superintending grace uh, in the decisions that are made that affect us and, and other nations around the world through the impact that this country has there. Father, we know that you are coming soon. We see the signs all around us. Who knows if this may be the year, but either way, Lord, our commitment is that this year we would walk with you a little closer. We would love others a little more deeply and we would love ourselves as we love you and as we love our neighbors. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome back, everyone. How was your lunch? I had some too. It was pretty good. So I hope you've been having a fun experience with our kings, and now we're going to see our queen. Earlier today, we learned about how God gave David the strength to defeat the giant Goliath and that God gives us strength like David. Okay, everyone, remember you have to be quiet, okay, or else we can't hear. It's time for the second story of today, which we will be telling in two parts. The story is about a young Jewish girl who became queen over all of Persia. Who's that? Esther. Esther. You can read it all about it in the Bible, in the book of Esther. Esther. That's right. As I said, our story takes place in ancient Persia, in the city of Susa. In Susa, there lived a Jew by the name of Mordecai, who had been taken into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon, and who was now an attendant at the king's gate. Mordecai had a cousin named Hadassah, who he had brought up since she was an orphan. 
how was your day, Cousin Mordecai? Oh, the usual, standing around the King's Gate, listening to the eunuchs talk, and, of course, avoiding Haman. Oh, is he still trying to make you bow to him? No matter what I tell him, he insists that I bow before him. The nerve of that Amalekite. Will the feud between our people never end? You know the story, Hadassah. It's our family history. We are of the tribe of Benjamin, the line of King Saul. It was Saul who refused to listen to the word of God and who allowed the king of the Amalekites to live. And now his descendant Haman looks for every excuse to strike down not only me, but all of the Jews. You don't need to avoid him, cousin. I'm proud that you stand for what is right. You're so much like your parents, full of a courage you don't even realize you have. But I must protect you, Hadassah. You are like my own daughter. If you were to find out about my family, I can't imagine what he would do to you. You always want what's best for me. But what about you? You shouldn't have to put up with Haman's cruelty. I'm able to protect myself. <laughs> you are growing up. Soon, you will have your own family to take care of. Maybe when that day comes, you will understand. You and our God are all the family I need, Cousin Mordecai. Marriage may still be far away from me. Now come with me. Ezra is looking to talk with you. In the third year of the reign of Xerxes, king of Persia, he gave a banquet for all his nobles and officials. For a full 180 days, he showed off the vast wealth of his kingdom. At the end of those days, the king gave a feast lasting seven days in the garden of his palace. Wine was served in goblets of gold and given freely to all who wanted it. Then... On this day, the last of a banquet for my nobles and officials, I, Xerxes, king of Persia, decree that every guest shall drink as much as they desire. Hear, hear, a toast to the health of our wise king. May he live forever by the grace of the god Ahura Mazda, eternal joy of all his loyal subjects. You speak well, Haman, but tell us this. Which of the king's jewels would you desire for yourself? Ah, they are all equally magnificent, Memukan. I wouldn't know which one to choose. My king, this man finds none of your jewels worthy of praise. Amen. You see that I, king of kings, do not own a jewel splendid enough to reflect my glory. Ah, uh, but my lord king, your most beautiful jewel isn't even here. Where is it then? Let it be brought. Surely. There is no beauty that could possibly compare to that of Queen Vashti. She is lovely to look at. Very well, then. He guy. My lord, the king. I command you to bring before me Queen Vashti, wearing her royal crown so that I might show her beauty to all of my subjects. As my king commands, so shall it be done. Now, Queen Vashti also had given a banquet for all the women in the royal palace of King Xerxes. Ah, more and more of an audience. Welcome to my banquet, the Queen's Banquet. Here we celebrate the glory of the Kingdom of Persia, a glory which I, as Vashti, share. And might I say so myself, a banquet that far surpasses the drunken party happening for the nobles of the king. Elegance, grace, and style can all be found here. I'm so glad you could join me. My lady, a message from your king? Well, don't just stand there, he guys. Speak! My king requires my lady's presence. For what purpose? He makes display of his most treasured object. <laughs> Am I such an object? Oh, the most beautiful of all, my queen. Wrong answer, he guy! It is not befit a lady, much less a queen, to be shown before a man quite drunk after too many days of feasting. But the, the king wills it. You are to wear the royal crown. Who does he think I am? Some common woman to be shown off like a pet. I am the most beautiful woman in all of Persia. That is why I was made queen. I will not be made a mockery of. But my queen... Do you also wish to mock me? Tell the king that I refuse.
Well, he guy, where's my queen? My lord, Queen Vashti refuses to come. <sighs> what? What? How dare she? My king, Queen Vashti wrongs you by refusing your command. A royal must be obeyed. Ramukan, you are my most trusted advisor. According to the law, what must be done to Queen Vashti? She has disobeyed my command for her to come here. <sighs> Queen Vashti has done wrong, not only against the king, but against all of the peoples in the lands of Persia. For the queen's behavior will become known to all women, and so they will despise their husbands. They will say, even Queen Vashti does not listen to her husband, the king. If it pleases the king, let him issue a royal decree. Let it be written in the laws of Persia, which cannot be undone, that Vashti is to be sent away and never again come before the king. Let the king give her royal position to someone else who is better than she. Then w when all women hear this, they shall honor their husbands, great or small. I am pleased with your advice, Mermukhan. Let it be written to every province in its own script and to every people in its own language. I declare by royal decree that the king no longer recognizes Vashti as his queen since she disobeyed my order. So the king did as Memukan proposed. The decree against Vashti went out to all parts of the kingdom. What is it now, he guy? By order of the king, you are hereby removed from your position as queen. You are to leave the royal palace and never return before the king. Leave? Has the king gone mad? I would be careful now how you talk about the king. You are no longer the queen. You are just a common woman of Persia. Fine. If the king wants his queen to be merely a showpiece with no mind of her own, he can find someone else. I refuse to have my dignity taken from me. I sympathize with you, but the king's word is law. You're the one who brought me into the palace, you guy. I guess it's only fitting that you kick me out. Big Than and Teresh will escort you from the palace. You both must see how wrong this is. How can the king refuse his power like this? Ugh, I guess you two wouldn't understand. You aren't royalty, which means what you think doesn't matter. I guess what I think doesn't matter either anymore. Later, when King Xerxes' anger had passed, he remembered his need for a queen. The king's advisor said, let a search be made for a beautiful young woman for the king. Let them be brought to the palace of Susa under the care of Higai, the king's eunuch, and let beauty treatments be given to them. Whichever young woman pleases the king shall be made queen in place of Vashti. This advice pleased the king, and he issued the decree for a new queen. Adassa, quick, you have to hide. What? What, what is this? Why do I have to hide? It's a decree for a new queen. They're taking all the young girls for the harem of the king. Hurry, we must go. What? Do you want to spend the rest of your life in a harem? We must go. What? Of course not. Let's go. In order of the king, your daughter must come with us. Ah. Uh, I have no daughter. Not according to your neighbor. He says there is a beautiful young girl who lives here. Uh, my neighbor is old. Uh, he doesn't see very well. You um, think you can outwit a chamberlain of the king of Persia? Search the house! Oh no, please. <laughs> this must be a mistake. Perhaps, perhaps it was a servant girl he saw, or maybe, maybe it was a girl from another family. Well, well, what is this? The daughter will come with us. Say your goodbyes. Can I have Good one moment with her? Goodbye, my dear cousin. May God protect you. May I speak to her for a moment? I promised your father I would keep you safe. 
and now you're being taken away. Have fi- faith and courage. The Lord our God will protect me. I know. When you must tell no one you are a Jew, don't even use your name. Call yourself, call yourself Esther. You'll be safer that way. You must keep your identity hidden from those that would harm you, like Haman. You must be brave, my child. I will never forget my people. You will always be a Jew, even if it is in the silence of my heart. Go in peace. And so it was that when the king's order was proclaimed, many young women were brought to the palace of Susa and put under the care of Hegai. Esther also was taken to the king's palace and entrusted to Hegai, who was in charge of the harem. Yes, the next. Another one, and a lovely one at that. Thank you, big fan Teresh. I'll take it from here. I am Higai. I am responsible for you as long as you are in this harem. Welcome to your no, new home, etc., etc. Today we begin transforming you and all the other young women in the palace to meet with the king. You shall all complete 12 months of beauty treatments, six with oils of myrrh, and six with perfumes of frankincense. And of course, I will be personally selecting your look for the king. (laughs) I trust your decision. You certainly know the king better than me. From the looks of it, you will be an excellent candidate to become the next queen. What is your name? My name is Esther. Esther. A Babylonian name. Your people are from Babylon? Um, I'm from Susa. You are quite mysterious, Esther of Susa. Well then, I am at your service. Is there anything you desire? Clothes? Jewelry? Aw, you're too kind. I'll ask for nothing other than what you suggest. Nothing. I think we will get along very well, Esther. Okay, off to the next. Okay. Oh, okay, breathe, Hadassah. You're okay. No amounts of oil will change who I am. I'm the child of God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely the goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Oh, God, bless me. Bless me with courage in this time of need. Esther quickly won favor of Hegai who provided her with beauty treatments and special food. He assigned her attendants from the king's palace and moved her into the best place in the harem. Esther did not reveal her nationality or family background, just as Mordecai had instructed. And every day, Mordecai, who was an attendant at the king's gate, walked back and forth near the courtyard of the harem to find out how Esther was and what was happening to her. It must have been very scary for Esther, don't you think? Yes? No? Maybe? She had to go live in a new place where she didn't know anyone. She must have had a lot of fears to overcome. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 4 that God's love can drive our fears away. So now we're going to do an activity where we think about our fears, write them down, and then we're going to squash them up and then throw them into a bucket to symbolize giving our fears to God. All right, I need my, what are you, the crew leaders, that's your names. Um, Mr. Noor is passing around post-its and pencils for some of our friends to write their fears on, okay? So think about what, what, what your fear is, what are you scared of? I'm a little scared of heights. That's one of my fears. That's an example you can use. Heights, being really tall up. Yeah. That's funny because I'm tall.
you guys seen Esther? Is she doing okay in the palace? Yeah? I hope so. I hope so. I haven't seen her since she, since she was brought in. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, we thought you saw her after, since well, you're at the gate. Well, I see her go in and out of the gate, but I don't really see her. You know what I mean? Like, I don't talk to her. Man. I hope you'll see her soon. I do hope so, too. I hope she's okay. Yeah. Has anyone written down their fear yet? If so, you can come right here at second base <laughs> and then you can crumple up your paper. You don't have to say your fear out loud if you don't want to. That's for you to know if you only want to know. Okay, stand at second base. Now, toss it in. Woohoo! good job, you made it. Okay, ready? Go ahead, Sarai. Oh, let's try again. One more time. Nice. Good job. Whoa, nice job. Okay, go sit down. Oh, you can try again. Oh, watch out for the light. Don't step on it. Good job. Remember, we're giving our fears to God. Good job, everyone. Nice. Nice job, everyone. Anybody else? Nice. <laughs> nice job, everyone. Good job. Oh, try again. Woo! If anybody else has one, come quick, or else it's going away. Nice job. Oh, try again. Good job. Nice. Woo! Oh, here, I can help you. You want to do it? Oh. Dropped again. You can crumple it up or you can just throw it in. All right. Five, four, three, sorry, <laughs> two, one. Nice. All right. You're going to take this away. You can grab one end and I can pick it up. Come, come, come. Watch out for the lights. Crew leaders, can I get the utensils, the writing utensils and the post-its back, please? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Appreciate it. Okay, everyone, we're going to get back to the story, okay? So we have to close our mouths so we can hear the actors and actresses, okay? Thank you. A year passed from the time that Esther was taken to the palace and when she went to meet the king. When the time came for Esther to appear before the king, she asked for nothing other than what he guy suggested. And Esther won the favor of all who saw her. The king was attracted to Esther more than any of the other women and she won his favor and approval. And so he set a, bank, a royal crown on her head and made her queen of Persia. He gave a great banquet, Esther's banquet, for all his nobles and officials. Hear my word, all of Persia. I have chosen a new queen. 
She was once a commoner, like yourselves, but perhaps you will not find her common now. Would you like to meet her? Well, kids, would we like to meet Queen Esther? Yeah. Bring forth Esther. Esther of Susa, my king. I crown you queen over all the lands of Persia, to reign over all the people of the city of Susa. All hail Queen Esther! Let's clap for Queen Esther! <laughs> Ooh, keep clapping, keep clapping! <laughs> All right, you may be seated. Thank you for participating. Now, remember Mordecai was an attendant at the king's gate. During that time, Bigthan and Teresh, two of the king's officers who also guarded the doorway, became very angry and conspired to kill King Xerxes. Are you afraid? It's not the first time I've killed a man. True, but it's the first time you'll be killing royalty. You have the poison to put in this drink? Go over the plan one more. I will distract the guards so that you can put the poison in the cake and then become a boy. Then I, then I will plant the rest of the poison in the heat guy's chamber so that he takes the blame. A very simple plan. If all goes well, there is no way to chase it back to us. Exactly. No one could possibly know it was ups. They plan to kill the king? Oh no, I must warn Esther immediately. Mordecai found out about the plot and told Queen Esther, who reported it to the king and gave credit to Mordecai. When the report was investigated and found to be true, the two officers were found guilty and executed. All this was recorded in the book of the nation's history in the, pre in the presence of the king. So, that was the end of the first part of Queen Esther. We saw Esther become queen, but there's still more to come. Do you all remember Haman? Yeah. Haman didn't really like Mordecai, so we'll see what happens in the second part, okay? We'll see you later. Thank you for listening. Bye! Wow, I, you know, when I got a chance to see uh, these skits in person, I was blown away, not only by the amazing acting talent, the great script, uh, but just the stage and the costumes. Uh, we really have an amazing team of young people uh, and their families who uh, put this together. And I just wanna share just a few brief words uh, as a concluding thought to what we have just seen, the story of David, and now the first uh, part of the story of Esther. And, and the thought that comes to me as I reflect on this new year, both in the story of David and both in the story of Esther, is the importance of being ready, being prepared. You never know what situation you may find yourself in. You never know uh, the uh, opportunity that may present itself to you. You never know what God may want you or need you to do at a moment's notice. Famously, Esther will say, who knows if God has brought me to the kingdom for such a time as this. We are at the beginning of a new year, 2022. If you are listening to this, uh, then God has brought you to this point. And who knows what opportunities, what challenges, uh, what exploits for the kingdom of God you may be called upon to do in 2022. But I want to let you know that God has called you for such a time as this. Young David, he spent all those years looking after his father's sheep. 
He spent all those years practicing with his sling, uh, scaring away the animals and protecting the sheep. Who could have guessed that those skills honed in obscurity would be the very skills he needed to fight God's battles and defeat the enemy Goliath? What has God been developing in you the last year? Perhaps during this time of COVID, you have discovered uh, a new ability to pray. Maybe you have uh, had to increase your capacity to use technology to stay engaged at work and different things connected to family members. Maybe you've started reading again and you've read several books and your mind is filled with information that you didn't have. Maybe you've become aware of how much time and energy you were spending commuting. And now you're trying to think, how can I redeem some of that time? I don't know what uh, 2021 has been like for you, but I want to let you know that could it be that God has been preparing you for such a time as this? I know as we go into 2022, there will be greater blessings uh, because that is always the way that our Father works. His blessings and his faithfulness are new every morning, every year. But I also know there will be challenges because that's how this broken, sinful world works. Some of us will get sick this year. Some of us may lose a job this year. Some of us may lose a loved one this year. Our faith may be challenged this year. We, there may be Goliaths and Hamans on our horizon. But God has prepared us. God has equipped us. God has gifted us. And as we come together as a family and as we pray for each other, how amazing the victories that will be won through the power of Jesus working in us. I want to encourage you, friend. Can I just speak to your heart for a second? Stick close to Jesus this year. Let's stick close to this to each other this year. I know what it has been like being at home, being isolated. For some of you, this is a, a, a life and death choice. You know the pre-existing conditions you have. You know the health concerns you're wrestling with. You're not afraid, but you are, have been very careful and you've, you've stayed at home. For some of us, We've got a little discouraged, haven't we? Our faith has got a little bit weak. The, 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 the loss of the rhythm of coming to the house of the Lord regularly, seeing uh, each other, it's gotten to us. Some of our uh, dark thoughts and dark emotions have crept up. Our anxiety has increased and we found ourselves stuck in a place and not quite sure how to get out. Some of us have become extremely isolated. No calls, no texts, no visits. We are wondering, does anyone see us? Does anyone know us? Does anyone care? Can I encourage you as I encourage myself in 2022? Let's reach out. Let's reach out to Jesus. Let's reach out to each other. Let, let the bond of the Spirit not be broken in our church, whether we are physically in the building or whether we are connected virtually. We can still be each other's support and strength. Who knows if God has been preparing you for such a time as this to give encouragement to someone, to help someone uh, make it through, to, to, to be a, a listening ear, a, a person that can receive and respond to a text message. I don't know what it might be, but I believe that in 2022, God is calling us to greater unity to greater love, to greater community with him and with each other. And so we continue to be unafraid. We continue to recognize that we are still the church and that Jesus is leading us. And if Jesus leads us, there's no giant, there's no enemy that can ever get in our way. Let us pray. Father God, thank you so much for giving us this new year. Thank you for the ways in which you prepare us for challenges even before we know they exist. Father, the challenges we've faced over the last year have been unprecedented. 
but your grace has even been more abundant. We thank you for that. And so, Lord, we go into this new year with confidence, knowing that you will be with us, knowing that you have prepared us, knowing that we will face the challenges together with you and that we will survive. Bless us as we come to the end of this worship experience and may your spirit continue to rest and abide on us and in us. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Prophecies fulfilled, and the signs of the times they're appearing everywhere. I can almost hear the Father as He says. So
Thank you so much for worshipping with us. I know, I know, I know we left you in a cliffhanger. What's going to happen to Esther? Well, the good news is uh, you can continue to watch the second half of the amazing uh, One Day Bible Experience VBS drama uh, right now on our YouTube channel. If you go to the description uh, box below or just go to our YouTube channel, you're going to find uh, the second half uploaded and you can watch it now or you can watch it this afternoon, uh, whatever is your uh, pleasure, whatever works best for you. God bless you this week. Have a wonderful week. Remember, we're back in person uh, next week. We'll continue to communicate uh, if there needs to be any changes with, in terms of numbers that it can attend. Uh, but next week, we're back in person. So have a wonderful week. Have a happy new year. Have a happy rest of the Sabbath. Uh, and join us on Wednesday, Wednesday the 5th, as we start our 10 days of prayer. Excited about that. Looking forward to seeing you there. God bless you. Have a great week.